You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, entitled, lazy and afraid of hard work. You might ask, HG, are you reading from one of Harry's wife's school reports? Uh, the answer to that is, no, I'm not, but potentially I could have been. Instead, Dan Wooten in the Daily Mail reports that royal courtiers thought the Sussexes were entitled, lazy and afraid of hard work. Now, let's break that down before we get into the body of the article as to what it can mean. First of all, let's apply it to Harry. Entitled. Indeed. Two reasons. One, the way he's been brought up within the machine that he has existed, that he doesn't really know any other way. But also, because he becomes influenced by his wife's behaviour as the victim of the narcissist, he was given everything that he thought that he wanted in his spouse. He married her quickly, captivated by the fact that she portrayed to him everything that he would want. He truly believed that he met his soulmate. Swayed particularly by the fact that the randy little ginger bugger was getting his end away on a regular basis. After all, he stated, she's so hot in response to the fact of when people complained about her behaviour as if it was worth putting up with. Now, of course, many of the people that I advise, particularly with regard to male victims, where they have been ensnared by a female narcissist, often cite the fact that they were given a lot of sex and that it was mind-blowing, and that kept them in the game. All narcissists, particularly where somatic and elite, will utilise sex. Read my book, Sex and the Narcissist, to understand. But female narcissists being hypersexualized is something which is particularly dangerous for a male victim. Harry finds that this individual, who gives him copious amounts of spicy poontang, tells him that he's special, that his family haven't supported him in the way that they ought to have done, and therefore encourages him to push against them, to leave them, to demand certain things. And thus, the core entitlement that Harry has becomes exacerbated by her presence. Laziness. Well, there is a degree of laziness about him. On the one hand, he joined the army and had to do everything that was required of him there, and of course he did his charitable work in Africa. So he would become engaged in service, but one sees that if he has a chance to shirk, he'll do so. Afraid of hard work? He didn't used to be. He would roll up his sleeves. Indeed, he seemed to be at his happiest and his most content when he was doing something practical, getting in amongst the dirt of activity. And it would seem to me that being afraid of hard work is a cross-polluting symptom of his wife's presence. What about her? Entitled? Absolutely. As a narcissist, she believes the world revolves around her, that she is the centre of the universe. Lazy? She is. One hour a week with Archwell. Lack of production with regard to Spotify. You can see that she wants the money, but she won't put in the graft. And that translates also into her being afraid of hard work. Essentially, she believes that everything should be placed on a plate for her, that everybody should be kowtowing to her because she's the marvellous Harry's wife, and the fact that when they do not, offends her. Thus, Dan Wooten recalls this is what they were viewed as, and he goes on to state that Spotify bosses have reached the same conclusion and shown... Harry, he won't be paid millions simply for being an arrogant prince. Spotify executive Bill Simmons' damning verdict of Harry and Harry's wife as fucking grifters as the streaming giant pulled the plug on the couple's astronomically disastrous $20 million podcast deal has come as no surprise to anyone working within the British royal family. While the uniquely American term, meaning someone who engages in small-scale swindling, was never used by courtiers during the three painful years the Sussexes were officially part of the monarchy, similar words were, as the pair found, ways to blame everyone but themselves for their perceived lack of success. Entitled, rude, lazy, 
delusional, and afraid of hard work were some that popped up between members of the Sussex Survivors Club regularly as Harry and Harry's wife looked for spurious reasons to get out of public service commitments they didn't think benefited them. That shirking of service, of course, is demonstrative of the lack of accountability of the narcissist and then Harry, who really ought to know better, having his head turned by the deliverer of spicy poontang. It culminated, Wooten continues, by stating, in the now-famous moment in Fiji, on a rare royal tour where work was actually required on daily walkabouts, where Harry's wife suggested she should be compensated financially for such hardship. I can't believe I'm not getting paid for this, she whinged, according to the well-sourced royal author Valentine Lowe. Harry's wife long had a reputation as a diva, even as a C-list actress in the moderately successful US drama Suits. A director who worked with her on a movie once told me, seriously, she was the worst actress I've ever had the displeasure of having to manage, outlining how she made a host of ludicrous and unreasonable budget-busting travel and personal requests. Lack of emotional empathy, sense of entitlement. Of course, Spotify was more than happy to pay for this sort of behaviour when they signed Harry's wife and her hapless husband Harry to such a record deal in 2020. Unproven as broadcasters, the couple's name was enough to help burnish the company's fledgling podcast business, of which over a billion dollars was being invested. And Spotify bent over backwards to make Harry and Harry's wife happy, capitulating when the couple started to moan about their biggest podcasting success, Joe Rogan, by launching a COVID-19 misinformation policy. Which makes the complete collapse of the Sussex deal, after just 12 pitiful episodes of Harry's wife's awfully woke celebrity moanfest archetypes and a boring Christmas special, even more extraordinary. But as any royal courtier could have warned them, whatever Spotify did, it was never going to be enough. Because... Making podcasts actually requires hard graft, a concept Harry and Harry's wife are allergic to. Not down the mines level manual labour, but a regular commitment to researching, planning, recording and overseeing post-production on episodes of a number of shows in order to build up a loyal following. Rogan, for example, works personally on multiple episodes a week of well over an hour ago, but it emerged last year that Harry's wife wasn't even prepared to interview some of her guests. New Yorker Alison Yarrow, who appeared on the episode To Be or Not To Be about the word bitch, admitted she was interviewed by one of Harry's wife's many producers, Farah Safari, rather than the Duchess herself. The fact the failure of the deal erupted so quickly suggests it was a total nightmare behind the scenes. Hollywood folk generally stab each other in the back, then release press releases praising the other party for being creatively brilliant and talented. They don't go on the record to attack famed departing colleagues as the equivalent of swindlers. That claim came from Bill Simmons, one of the world's most famous podcasters himself, who also doubles as head of podcast innovation and monetization at Spotify. In other words, the bloke tasked with making Harry and Harry's wife's deal work commercially. Speaking on his own Spotify podcast, he said, I wish I'd been involved in the Harry's wife and Harry leave Spotify negotiation, the fucking grifters. That's the podcast we should have launched with them. The craziest thing to me is that Harry couldn't even find it in himself to make one sole podcast episode or series in exchange for his part of the millions being pumped into his bank account. And remember, the bar was set very low in terms of what Spotify was prepared to commission. Could the bloke, who is apparently so sincere in his desire to change the world, not come up with a single idea of content to inspire or entertain the masses? After all, with his little black book overflowing, most interesting folk would, at the very least, be open to his call to appear. But Harry's default setting these days is as Mr. Cantankerous, as we saw loud and clear when he came under cross-examination in his mirror phone hacking case earlier this month and was unable to produce a scrap of evidence for his costly claims, even though he arrogantly said he'd feel a sense of injustice if the verdict goes against him. Furious Simmons backed his comments up by adding, I've got to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try and help him with the podcast idea. It's one of my best stories. Fuck them, the grifters. 
This is all catastrophic for Harry and Harry's wife's woke dream of living in an A-list Californian lifestyle like Oprah Winfrey or Ellen DeGeneres without any of the toil that both those ladies put in five days a week to build their fortune. Hollywood was open to the Duke and Duchess of Delusion, somewhat taken with the idea of a man prepared to walk away from his birthright for a life of immense privilege in order to set up a new start for his family away from those ghastly royals and the vile British tabloid media. But Harry failed to understand that he wasn't simply going to be paid tens of millions of dollars because he was a prince. That goes against the entire principle of the American dream. He and she failed spectacularly. Netflix is now considering ending its deal with the Sussexes too. So while there'll always be a company stupid enough to flush millions down the loof, the initial PR are being connected to a deal with Harry and Harry's wife. The opportunity to make an impact as a game-changing content creator, working with streaming giants who could bring them an audience of billions across the globe, has now been dashed. It's a cautionary tale of why spoiled royals will always struggle to cut it in the real world. It's also a tale demonstrating how the entitlement of Harry's wife leads to another crap outcome. Yes, her Sadim touch is alive and well. And how, of course, she dragged Harry down, capitalising on certain of his behaviours to bring about the outcome that I've just described. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.